All right, so like I mentioned, this will be at least a two-parter, and for this video, I wanted to primarily focus on some pre-release changes, as well as the various unused maps and areas that are left over in the game. And I'll save the unused graphics, audio, and other stuff for later. So first off, before we get to the main game itself, let's take a look at a few things that were seen in trailers leading up to the game's launch that didn't make it into the final release. I've seen a few comments in my prior videos that said quite a few things were changed, so let's take a look. Firstly, seen in the teaser trailer from September of 2020, we see a shot of the kitchen area, and in the top, Moondrop can be seen lurking around. In the final game, Moondrop doesn't ever appear here. This first trailer also features dialogue that is never heard in the final cut, as well as a jump scare from Vanny that looks quite different from the one that's seen in the final release. I've seen a few people comment on the differences here, and I gotta agree, the original trailer one is certainly scarier with the rather frightening scream, but the one that is used in the final release does seem to fit Vanny's character more, as it almost seems more… playful. And lastly, at the start of this trailer, there's a shot of a large area filled with what appears to be silos. This area kind of looks like this one with a bunch of silos or vats seen near the loading docks area, but it's in a different spot and it looks like it actually would have appeared right here behind this wall. Even after zipping the camera through this wall, it looks like there's absolutely no trace of this room left though. Now they may not be the same, but these silos also appear similar to these ones seen in an unused model viewing room that's left in the game. We'll come back to this unused room later again in this video, but to me it seems like this could have been at least a similar room. A large open area with numerous silos? Checks out. Anyways, on to the next pre-release trailer, we got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX reveal trailer for the game from January of 2021. The first notable difference in this trailer is seen in this shot here. It appears that at an earlier point in development of this game, the El Chips Mexican restaurant area was directly connected to the Rockstar Arcade area instead of the two areas being connected by a hallway with double doors. Apart from this, the areas both look to be pretty much the same, right down to the air hockey tables here, but in the final, there's just a big old door separating the two areas now. Now I assume this change was made in order to create a loading area between the two rooms instead of just having the entire area loaded in together at once, which I guess may have proved to be too computationally demanding on some hardware. Additionally in this shot, we can see a sombrero clad staff bot delivering some pizza. Now this sombrero staff bot actually got completely scrapped from the game, and all we see in El Chips instead is just a regular old janitor bot. I definitely think that the sombrero bot would have been a nice touch to the theming of the restaurant here. Anyways, the next shot in this trailer shows off Bonnie's bowling area, and here, once again, we see what looks to be an earlier version of this area, as regular staff bots can be seen standing behind the counter, instead of this type that's seen in the final version, and here we can also see some doors in the back here that were changed for the final release. And lastly, for the pre-release trailers, we got the PlayStation gameplay trailer from February of 2021. Things that don't happen in the final version include Vanny being seen in this room, this scene of seeing Vanessa outside the elevator, and finally, and probably the coolest thing here, we can see a completely different UI for the Fazwatch. Instead of the game switching to a different full-screen view as it does in the final, at this point in development, the player would just directly look at the screen on the model of the Fazwatch itself. And not only that, but the layout of the screen is also quite different. The font is different, missions was once inventory, messages used to be called logs I guess, the flashlight battery meter was moved to a bottom section here, which also has a meter for Freddy's battery level, what I assume was probably the player's current security clearance level, as well as what looks to be the number of party passes that Gregory has. Here, it appears that he would have two at the same time, something that isn't possible in the final game, as you can only get the second party pass well after having to use the first one to progress in the game's story. Honestly, I gotta say, I like this UI for the Fazwatch way more. Sure, the camera screen might not be as big, but it just looks so much cleaner. It's nice to have the inventory here instead of having to go to the pause menu for some reason. And hey, it actually tells you the time. That's kind of a nice watch feature, don't you think? And now, moving on to the second part of this video, let's switch gears and talk about some unused maps that go left over in this game. 
And thankfully for us, Security Breach actually has a lot of these with a whole bunch of stuff for us to talk about, so let's dive on in. First, let's talk about an unused room that I covered in a short not too long ago, and this is of course the unused character gallery room. As the name of this map suggests, this is indeed a character gallery, and here, by following the instructions on the floor, you can cycle between models of various characters in the game, including the four main animatronics, Vanny, Burntrap, which lets us get a nice close look at all the human remnants of him, if that's what we want to call this, and here we can also see some models that don't normally go used in the game, such as this frozen Glamendo, which I guess is only partially seen in the first lockdown office area in this here box, as well as this unused yellow crash test looking staff bot. We'll talk a bit more about these unused models in the next video. Then, in addition to all of these character models, here you can also switch to viewing, I assume, basically every arcade cabinet that appears in the Pizzaplex. This includes absolute classics like Milk Spoiled, Milk 2 Sour, and of course, Melon Felons. Can't forget Melon Felons. Then if we look around here, we can see that this gallery is found in what appears to be an area similar to that seen near the loading docks. And like I mentioned earlier, these do seem similar to the other ones seen in the game, only flipped upside down here for some reason. It's kind of an ominous looking area overall. Anyways, although it would be nice if there were even more models to view here from the game, it's still really cool to be able to view and inspect all of these characters and arcade machines up close and from a bunch of different angles. Next up we got Hive Room, and this is a small two-floor arcade area following the Hive motif from the file name as it features honeycomb-like patterns on the wall, as well as some really nice lighting. Now there aren't any B animatronics in this series, at least that I can remember, and since many of the other areas are themed after an animatronic, who knows, maybe at one point a B was considered to join the series. Then moving on, next we got a few maps left in the game that appear to be early versions of existing maps that were used in the pre-release trailers that we went over earlier. The first of these is Map East Arcade Restaurant, and no, I didn't make the spelling mistake with restaurant there, as this is actually how the developers spelled it. Anyways, this map actually features the original layout of both L Chips as well as the adjacent arcade like we saw in the trailer. There's like three different ways that connect the two areas, and honestly, it's just so much better. It makes more sense, it looks better, and yeah, it just seems like a lot more of a realistic way of connecting the two areas compared to a closed off corridor. I guess I get why they might have had to make this change from a technical standpoint, but it's really too bad. This looks infinitely better, I think. Furthermore here, the actual arcade seems to have a different layout too. Now, although I didn't go over each arcade cluster and see if they're the same, I noticed that this early version lacks this little seating area here, and it looks like at this point in development, the vent section here wasn't implemented, nor was the security office area to which it leads. The next area that was seemingly seen in a trailer but has been scrapped is Map Kitchen Large Vat Room, and this appears to be the room that was seen in this shot here. Although there's no proper or fancy lighting like we saw in the trailer, here we can see a bit more of this room, and yeah, basically as the name implies, it's a room with some large vats of god only knows what. Pizza sauce? It's still unclear what this large area would have been for, but regardless, still cool to see it kicking around. Then similarly, there's an early version of this office room known as Map Vat Room. This is that one office room that's connected to the other VAT room that is used, but the updated version is connected to it rather than being its own map like this. Although it's mostly the same, the new one does have a few small changes, including the carpet being changed to blue from pink and also flipped around. The TV on the wall has a different animation playing, as do the computer monitors. The used version got rid of the whiteboard for whatever reason. The boxes look more disorganized, there's more junk all over the place here, some laptops were removed, some Chica posters were added, this Roxy picture was seemingly moved into this box, and the biggest change of all, this Freddy garbage can was opened. Unbelievable. And the last early version of a map that was seen in trailers that I could find was Map Bowling Alley Test. And here we can see the original layout with the regular staff bots behind the counters, as well as the alternate doors in the background. Other changes here include a lack of the backroom areas behind the counter where you find the Monty Mix, 
There's no stage found here at all. And on the other side of the area, we can see that at this stage in development, there was actually windows here in Bonnie Bowl where guests could actually look down onto Roxy's Raceway. Honestly, this would have been awesome if it was left in. Just like with the El Chip stuff, it would have further visually connected the different areas in the Pizzaplex and just made it seem more realistic. And also, just like with El Chips, I can only assume that this change was made since having all of Roxy's Raceway loaded in might have proved to be a bit too demanding. I don't know, I just think these windows would have been so cool. And furthermore, this also appears to be an earlier version of Roxy's Raceway down here, as some changes can be noted, such as the garage bays haven't been developed yet, and the cart with a staff bot that's used in the story isn't seen here yet either. Other than that though, the area seems pretty much intact. Anyways, next up from this bowling map, probably the best thing here, remnants from a scrapped bowling minigame can also be found. One of the lanes in here has a bowling ball in front of it, sporting a nice default Unreal texture, and at the same lane, a large button or cube can be found on the console. After interacting with it, a bowling minigame will load, and basically you just move where and at what angle you want to throw the ball from, and then you move the mouse up to throw the ball, and then you can sort of control it both left and right by moving the mouse accordingly. This bowling minigame has a whole scoring system programmed with some UI graphics for keeping score as well, albeit very basic looking. And there were also otherwise unseen screens for various bowling outcomes, such as getting a gutter ball, split, spare, and strike. Although still basic, it seems like a decent amount of work was put into this little minigame. I guess the developers just weren't able to finish it up for release. Hopefully we do see it added into the game in a future update, because I think it's a cool touch to this area. And last up for the bowling area, if we move behind the lanes here, we can see some hidden developer text that was left in. Simply leaving a reminder to, I quote, Add bowling alley behind the scene stuff. I guess there were once plans to add more stuff behind the lanes here, but looks like that never came to be. That said, behind this wall there's this unused door that's probably a remnant from back when there was supposed to be something back here. Next up we got two normally unused utility areas. And the first of these is actually partly still found in the final version of the Pizzaplex. In this area that you have to use Monty's Claws to get into to get this present, there's actually a hidden hallway just behind this here wall. Now the final map just leads you up to these stairs here, but if we look at the original version of this area in the map Utility Southeast Corner, there's actually a bit more to this. At the end of this corridor is a split path that lets you go to an upper or lower segment of what appears to be a storage area for some go-karts. Also further in this area is another smaller storage room with what looks like replacement go-kart parts, so perhaps this was a go-kart repair station or something. There's also Freddy and Flashlight charging spots here, so this area seems a bit further along than some of the other scrapped places we've seen so far. Then at the end here is a staircase that would offer another exit, but since it abruptly ends, I'm not exactly sure where this was intended to lead. But with all the go-kart stuff here, I'd be willing to bet it would probably lead to Roxy's Raceway. Then next, the second unused utility area here is titled Map Utility East, and based on this signage, this appears to have been a once planned shortcut between Gator Golf and the daycare area. There's not too much to this map, there are a few endos, only one of which appears to be active, and yeah, it's just your average utility area. Now if you remember, there's actually a door near the lobby to Gator Golf that requires level 10 security clearance. And since currently you can't ever get level 10 security clearance, you can never normally enter this door. But if we force the camera through the door here, we can actually see the same signs that are seen in the utility passage, basically confirming that this would have served as one of the entrances to this shortcut. Now there were apparently planned to be several other utility shortcuts like this that would have let you cross between different areas of the Pizzaplex faster. And as we've seen, many of them have been covered up or blocked off by doors that you can't normally bypass. These seem like they would have been pretty handy for getting around, it's too bad they weren't implemented. Alright, moving on, next up are several areas that were seemingly removed around the Rockstar Row area that you start the game in. First and foremost here is a massive backstage area that was completely dropped. 
This large area contains various props and such thrown all over the place, a double set of curtains, stage lights, a long catwalk higher up here. It's just such a large area, and it's honestly hard to believe it was simply Thanos snapped out of existence. It must have been a bit later on in development too, as a save point was implemented. In fact, you can actually see this room in the final cut of the game, as this is the area that you see in the texture on the windows in the backstage office. The render of the area used in this screenshot appears to be from a bit later in development though, as although it's almost the same, some changes can be noted such as these stairs aren't seen in this version. There also seems to be a few different ways that the player could have entered this area. There are some lower doors here, in this side room it looks like there was going to be another overhead door as on the other side of this wall we can see markings to support this. Then on the other side in this other side room, just behind the wall is a vent that Gregory was meant to unscrew. And judging by the save point being here, I'd guess that this is the way that you'd get into the backstage area for the first time. It's currently unclear what purpose exactly this area was planned to serve in the game, but just judging at how large and relatively complete it is, I'd reckon it would have been something pretty neat. And the funny thing is, this isn't the only scrapped area here either, as there are two more large rooms that were meant to be seen in the southeast corner of this section of the Pizza Plex. Just behind the wall in this warehouse room are two sets of level 4 security doors that would have led to a large kitchen area. The kitchen area is similar to the one that's seen with the whole Pizza Bot segment, but it's definitely different. Interestingly enough, these level 4 doors here are actually still hidden out of bounds in the final version of the map that's used. Additionally to these doors, there also would have been an alternate vent that could have been used to gain access inside, and it can even be seen protruding in the wall here. This however was completely removed from the final version. Anyways, this kitchen would have actually led to another area here, and this is known as the VIP room. Here there's a giant TV, several speakers, a bar, a dance floor, as well as a fully finished bathroom. Now most places for kids don't have a bar or a dance floor like this, so as the name implies, this might have been for some VIP adults or something, as this room, minus the bathrooms of course, certainly seems less aimed towards kids compared to any other area that would be accessible to the public in the Pizzaplex. In the final cut of the game, another VIP room is referenced when you try to get to this area here, but this one doesn't seem to be related. Additionally, amongst several others that we'll cover in the next video, there's one unused staff bot voice line that references a VIP room as well. Halt! VIP members only. Now some have speculated that this scrapped line might have been related to this room, and some unknown conditions would have had to be met in order to gain access as a VIP. All three of these unused areas seem to have been removed later in the game's development, and I think they would have made this part of the Pizzaplex a lot more meaningful. This picture in this tweet by Maz here really puts into perspective just how big of a chunk was scrapped from this area. It's certainly non-negligible. Next, I mentioned the hidden developer text in the Bowling Alley test map, but there are actually several other instances of this that can be found in other unused maps. In an old version of the laundry rooms, text can be seen here referencing a locked fence gate. I assume this means there was once a plan to add a locked gate here, probably one of the ones that requires Monty's claws or Chica's voice box to open. Then very close to this is a door with more text here mentioning that it requires staff bot. Now some have speculated that this might have been for a scrapped segment where you would have had to take control of another staff bot similar to the pizza bot segment in order to open this door, but I think it's more likely that this is just a note by the developers to remind them that they need to add a staff bot in this room, since in the final version of this area, a staff bot is seen behind this door. Next up, in an early version of the loading dock hallway, the text electrical box can be seen hovering here above what I assume is an electrical box. It's unclear why exactly this text is here though. Next, found in Map East Arcade Backwall, here is some more developer text floating above that says door here. And this was likely a reminder for the developers to add a door here, but it seems that no door was ever added. And lastly here, while we're talking about the hidden dev text, although not exactly the same, in the final version of the map, there's hidden text in the wall here spelling ATM. 
Now this ATM text is seen above several ATMs in the Pizzaplex, but for whatever reason with this one, the text is displaced just behind the wall here, leaving it hidden away from normal view. And last up for this video, similar to the unused bowling game we saw earlier, there are actually some more minigame things that go unused. Well, the first of these is I guess half unused, as although you can play the Gator Golf minigame in the final cut of Security Breach, only half of the developed holes are ever normally playable, as there are actually 9 that aren't seen in normal play for a total of 18 holes. Of the ones that aren't normally seen, first is hole number 4 here, and this would have had the player hitting the ball through a cutout in a spinning gear. Then next is hole 5, and this had a Phaser Blast themed hole, which has a large spinning maze-like section in the middle. Hole 6 here is one themed around Roxy's Raceway, it's pretty standard, but at the start, if you're able to hit the ball into the pipe right above Roxy's head, you'll get an instant hole in one, which is pretty sweet. The next unused hole is hole 12, and this is another Gator Golf themed one. Here there are two alligators that chomp down to stop the ball, and then the hole is up this ramp, so you have to hit the ball at the right strength in order to make it up the ramp, but also not too hard so you don't hit the wall and rebound back down. Then next is hole 13, which has a moat of sorts with a large mound in the middle with the hole. Then moving away from the gator theme for a bit, unused hole 4 would have been all about pizza pies, as several of them can be seen in the surroundings here. Honestly, they look good enough to eat. The actual layout is pretty cool here too, as the goal is to stay on the main path if you can, otherwise you'll drop down one of these gaps on the sides that leads to a lower area that will have you needing more strokes to finish here. Unused hole 15 takes us back to Gator Country, and here there's a ramp at the start, which if you hit the ball just right, you can get it into this pipe that will take the ball right into the hole. Then next is hole 16, and this appears to be the earliest hole of the bunch, as it's very basic and much of it is still actually untextured. It's basically a large pipe with some basic geometry blocking the way. Not much to say here, I can definitely see why this one wasn't added in, at least in the state that it's currently in. And the last unused hole for this minigame is hole number 17, and this appears to have been themed around the daycare play area. This is not an easy hole, as I found it pretty difficult to find the right power and angles necessary to not have the ball roll back out of bounds. With the exception of the one seemingly unfinished hole, it's kinda strange that basically half of the holes were scrapped, especially considering that they're basically finished, let alone still found in the game's files. I'm glad they did keep the cool throwback holes to past FNAF games, but still, some of these holes, especially the Phaser Blast and Roxy's Raceway ones, would have been an awesome fit too. And last, but certainly not least, is a minigame that was completely scrapped, and this one is called Chica's Feeding Frenzy. Here, you take control of Chica, and the goal is simply to blast pizza slices at some very basic looking enemies and survive as many waves as possible. Destroying enemies makes them drop some coins, and every few waves, more and more difficult enemies will spawn, with a glowing boss-like enemy appearing every 5 rounds. At first I thought these numbers on the side might have hinted at a multiplayer mode for this game as well, but it turns out that this is actually an ammo counter for alternate blasters you can get in the game, such as a shotgun-like one or a super rapid fire one. I also moved the camera to get a closer look here, and not only are the enemies really basic spheres with like a nub, Chica herself looks pretty hilarious. Although certainly looking really basic, it's honestly a really fun little minigame. Like with the scrapped bowling minigame, some are speculating that the unused Gator Golf holes and Chica's feeding frenzy might get added in a future update, and that would be awesome. But let's hope it isn't in the form of paid DLC. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know unused areas are probably my favorite thing to cover. So yeah, guess you can say I'm pretty happy with all the stuff we still got to see left over in the files. But on the flip side, it kind of bums me out that some of these things didn't make it into the final cut, at least not yet, especially given the state that they're still found left in the files. Alright, let's first start off with some unused models, animations, and graphics. First up we got this unused model of a frozen variant of one of the Glamrock Endo enemies. Now apparently some parts of this Endo do actually appear in the first security office section in the game here, including its head, but the full model is never used. 
Furthermore, there are unused voice lines and subtitle text for both Gregory and Freddy in the game that suggest that this model would have been used for a scrapped mission in the game, dealing with adjusting the temperature in a boiler room to warm up the room with the frozen endo. This would be in order to get some sort of camera. Perhaps this was the original way the player was to get the Faz camera that you normally get in the Gator Golf area. Anyways, here are the unused voice clips for this. That endo's frozen solid. It's holding some sort of... camera? Now personally, I hate dealing with the endos, so I can't really say I miss this fella not being added in. But on the flip side, next, what I think certainly is a shame that didn't make it in is this Magician Bot. Now a decrepit version of the Magician Bot is seen in the game seated at this table with some other bots, but this working, cleaned up version is never normally seen. And in addition to just the model being left in, there are also several voice clips that give us insight into the Magic Bot's show that I guess it would perform. It's honestly pretty funny, and I'm sure it would have been an awesome addition, so it sucks that I got the snips. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Fazbear Theater. Now enjoy the mystery and magic of the one and only Staff Bot. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what I am about to show you may confound and confuse you. Some may become scared, yet I implore you, do not be frightened by the mystical powers I possess. Do not fear the unknown, but be warned. The unknown is both dangerous and uncontrollable in the wrong hands. Now, for my first trick, I will pull a rabbit out of my hat. Error, no rabbit found. Error, I gotta get a new hat. I need a new hat. You sir, is that a coin behind your ear? I have no ears. No, because I now have it here in my hand. See, here, in my hand. Ooh, now, for some hypnotism, I will now pick an audience member at random. You, sir. Who, me? We have never met before. No, I have never seen you before in my life. Sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. I am human sleeping. I cannot sleep. I am a robot. Can I have another volunteer? I hope I get picked. I hope I do not get picked. No volunteers. For my next trick, I will make the audience disappear. Close your eyes and count to three. One, two, three. Wow, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Based on the announcer mentioning that this was at the Faz Theater, this may have also been the original concept for the show on stage before it was changed to the Comedy Bot. And speaking of the Comedy Bot, although in the final game it just appears as any old run-of-the-mill bot, there's actually a unique unused model for it left over in the files of the game. This model would have had the bot sporting a nice bow tie, vest, bowler hat, and apparently it was planned to hold a microphone as well. I have absolutely no idea why this was scrapped in favor of just a regular staff bot, as this unique one looks way better. Next, although there aren't proper leftover models for them, there are textures for two more unused staff bot variants. The first of these is a mime bot, and there's also textures left in the game for an associated hat for it. Then secondly, there's textures for an alien bot, not to be confused with the staff bots with just the alien hats. These ones appear to have taken the alien role much more seriously. It's very likely though that these were also once planned to be seen in the Phaser Blast section of the game, as there's also an emissive texture that appears to reveal a few target points that the player might have had to aim for with the blaster. It's unfortunate these weren't fully realized, because they would have looked awesome I think. Now next up, not an unused model itself, but there is an emissive texture in the game left over for Moondrop in which it appears that both his face and stars on his pants would start to glow, which I think is pretty cool. Next, there are several animations for some models that are left over unused in Security Breach. First off, the super not disgusting looking burn trap has a death animation that never gets used. This animation appears to show Burn Trap getting burned as he struggles to what looks like put out the flames before he ultimately falls and succumbs to the damage. So I guess before it was changed to a pre-rendered cutscene for Burn Trap's death, question mark, at one point the player might have seen Burn Trap burn right before Gregory's eyes. Then next is an animation for Moonbro here, tagged with teaser in its file name, and yep, that's because this is actually the same animation that's used for one of the teaser trailers for this game. I guess this animation was made specifically for this trailer. In a similar fashion, there are three animations that were used for the Freddy and Friends on tour short animation teasers for this game, but they don't go used anywhere else. 
These include an animation of Moondrop spinning his head and attacking after transforming from Sundrop from the second episode, DJ Music Man walking from the third episode, which was cool to see in full, as in the episode you can only see his legs, or arms? And lastly, there is an animation of Vanny that's from the fourth episode of the show, in which she moves her head closer to the camera. This animation is pretty funny, as although the full model is used, only the head and torso appear to move forward, leaving the rest of the appendages... yeah. And the last unused animation here is another really cool one, as it's actually an unused jump scare animation for... one of the Moondrop plushes? Although seen benign in the final game, there is coding left over for an item randomizer, and it's thought that this was for a scrap survival mode in the game, where there was a random chance that the player would just get jump scared with a moon plush when opening a present. Next, there are unused Roxy Raceway graphics for the animatronics. Now, although the one for Freddy is partially seen on this screen near the bumper cars area here, there are actually full sets of sprites for these animations for Monty, Chica, and of course, Roxy as well. Each appears slightly different too, with Freddy seeing a cactus on the curved track and Chica with some pylons, then having a straight road, Monty would have some power lines to his right, while Roxy just has an open road. Now if you didn't catch the little easter egg here, these all appear to be a direct reference to Mario Kart 64, right down to the minimap and the player icons on the left here. Although the bottom sections of these animations looked like they were probably going to be used for an animated banner or something, it's unclear if the upper sections were all going to be signs like the Freddy one that's used, but seeing as how it looks like all of these were planned to be seen together since we can see their placements in the race, they almost look like they were planned to be seen on the Drive arcade games or on the four large TV screens above the racetrack or something. But regardless what they were meant for, I really love this little reference to Mario Kart. And lastly here, there is an unused graphic that, at first glance, appears to be an eye for an animatronic or something. Well, it turns out that this is actually an image of HAL 9000, the computer antagonist most famous from the 1968 classic sci-fi film 2001 A Space Odyssey. In fact, this exact image appears to be the first one that you see on Google when searching for HAL 9000. What purpose this image was to serve in a FNAF game, however, is still currently unknown. Next, more so unseen rather than unused, is just a cool bit of info regarding the Princess Quest minigames found in Security Breach. Well, before that, for starters, as an update to my previous FNAF VR video in which I mentioned that there were leftover unused graphics for the princess swinging a sword as well as graphics for an old man, well, it turns out that both of these did finally go on to be used in this game. Anyways, the cool tidbit I wanted to discuss is that the princess is actually given a name in the game's files this time around. She is actually referred to as Cassidy in the files, and some believe that this may be a reference to the name of one of the missing kids that was kidnapped by William Afton. Regardless, cool to see her given a name now, albeit hidden in the files. Next up, there are various remnants in the files of the game that suggest that at one point it looks like there was a scrapped minigame segment in Roxy's Raceway that would have presumably had the player take control of the staff bot in the go-kart after repairing its head. First, there's leftover coding for various things, some rather specific, like cart air resistance, lateral friction, checkpoints, and more. There's also some unused heads-up display graphics, including what appears to be a speedometer, and in addition to all of that, there are also several unused voice lines that appear to have been intended for this section. Happy birthday. Lightly give it some gas. Let off the clutch. Wrong way. Avoid the red asphalt. Guide right. Careful now, not too fast. Merge into traffic. Yield to traffic. Watch the curb. Avoid the clones. Take the cart out of neutral. Release the handbrake. And if all of that wasn't enough, just recently it looks like someone was actually able to get the go-kart functionality loaded back into the game, as seen here in this gameplay footage. Here we can see all the UI graphics as they were meant to be seen, the speedometer is functional, the model of the go-kart is seen, there's text here for lap times, and the craziest thing of all is that when crashing into Chica here, we can see her ragdoll just before the player gets a game over. Does this necessarily imply that you were once meant to drive around the Pizzaplex and make some animatronic roadkill? Not exactly, but hey, it's still pretty funny. 
The driving mechanics in this footage definitely seem pretty rudimentary. I don't think it's any surprise why this wasn't added in yet, at least not in the state we see it here. But nonetheless, not only would this have probably been a cool little minigame, it also would have made the Roxy's Raceway segment more memorable. I don't know, the other boss fights aren't anything special either, but I guess compared to decommissioning Monty or Chica, to me, Roxy's Raceway just kind of feels like it has a lot of missed potential, especially since it basically boils down to just a cutscene and a short chase sequence. Now moving along, let's go to some unused audio stuff, of which this game actually has a lot. First are several music tracks that are left over unused in the files. There's a bunch here including remixed tracks from past FNAF games like Sister Location, Ultimate Custom Night, and Freddy in Space 2. In the interest of time, I won't play the tracks in their entirety here, but as always, if you want to listen to them in full, head on over to the cutting room floor, which I'll have linked for you in the description below. Anyways, here's a quick sample of each. Now next up, in addition to the music, we've went over a bunch already, but Security Breach has several additional voice lines that got cut from the game. First are several unused Faz facts that would have been spoken by the Dread Unit announcer guy that apparently I sound like while the player was inside an elevator. Did you know that everyone loves pizza? Yes, it's true. Based on a double-blind study from a leading Fazbear publication and scientists, 100% of those questioned would choose pizza over any other food group, even people with wheat and dairy allergies. This has been another fun Faz fact. Did you know that bears like pizza sauce more than honey? It's true. Before their extinction, bears were known to attack pizza delivery trucks more than any other food service vehicles. This has been another fun Faz fact. Did you know that birthday wishes only come true at Freddy Fazbear's? It's true. Kids who have home birthdays have fewer friends and parents who don't love them. This has been another fun Faz fact. Those uh, sure are some fun facts. We are to learn that bears are extinct in the FNAF universe. Then next, there's an unused clip of the announcer. Now it's time for a classic Fazbear cartoon. It's thought that this classic Fazbear cartoon would have been one of the episodes of the Freddy and Friends on Tour show that might have been shown at the Faz Theater. Next, there are several unused lines related to Fazer Blast, including giving more instruction, as well as joining the blue team instead of the orange team as you do in the final version. Ah, Fazer Blast, sport of kings. You will need to win the game in order to receive your very own Fazer Blaster. Good luck. Calling all recruits. Fazer Blast is a high-intensity space combat simulation. Suit up and save the universe as you blast everyone and everything with high-tech laser effects. Blast strangers, blast your friends, beat the superstar score, and get a free Fazer Blaster gun. Enlist now. Aim for the glowing targets on your opponent's vest and pull the trigger. Successfully shooting your opponent will deactivate your opponent's weapons for 5 seconds. Based on the color of the target you will receive between 1 to 100 points. You are on the blue team, soldier. Report to the blue hallway. You will be playing base attack. 
Capture the three enemy bases by defeating each guard and then pressing the button under the base flag. Your health points are displayed on your headset. Each time you are hit, you lose one health. Each time you capture a flag, you will regain health. If you lose all your health, you lose the game. Too bad. You can press the reset button to try again. Great job. You qualified to enter the Superstar Club. Come in and take a souvenir Fizzer Blast prize. Hold on, soldier. Return your equipment to the rack to exit. Return your gear or I will be forced to call security. Next up are several voice lines for an unused sales bot staff bot variant. These sales bots were, of course, all about selling and would also try to apparently sell a red balloon and some believe it might have been this one in the warehouse area. Furthermore, since there are both male and female versions of these bot voice clips, it's speculated that there were going to be at least a few of them around the Pizzaplex, perhaps either around any one of the little kiosk things or at the prize counter area. Red Balloon, Sunny. Buy this. Spend money here. I sell things that you want. No free samples. Sell, sell, sell. Pressure sales mode activated. Keep smiling. Next, I mentioned the family of decrepit staff bots earlier, but it seems like they were once planned to actually have some dialogue instead of just creepily sitting there. This short bit basically had the mom leaving the father bot here. I am home. You are home early. I quit my job. What about the children? We have a down payment on a new closet. I do not know what I was thinking. I was compelled to leave my post. This is no longer working. I am leaving. Do not go. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. I've seen several people in my comments talk about how this family of staff bots is supposed to represent the Afton family. Now I'm no FNAF theory guy, but let me know in the comments if this dialogue at all supports this theory or not. Anyways, in Security Breach, I'd say the staff bot voice that's used is a pretty good fit, but there's actually some unused voice clips featuring what appears to be an early alternate version of the text-to-speech bot that's used. Hello, please take this map. Thank you, please enjoy. Halt, VIP members only. Although still not a real voice, it does sound much more realistic than the bot voices we got, and I don't think this one would have fit nearly as well. Similarly, there are some more unused staff bot lines that use yet another voice. This is actually the same voice that is used by the staff bots in the Phaser Blast segment, but some of these lines don't appear to fit with that area, so it's theorized this could have been yet another early contender for the main staff bot voice. This is your final warning. He's hiding over there. Warning. Obstruction detected. Security breach. The place is closed. Next, there are a few mop bot lines that were actually used when Security Breach first released, but due to a bug where sometimes the audio didn't play and only subtitles would appear, these lines were taken out of the game in an update patch. These still exist in the files though, for both the male and female janitor mop bots. The Mega Pizza Plex is closed. Leave the premises or I will be forced to call a security. Exit the building. This is your final warning. Alert. Alert. Security. And lastly here for the unused voice lines, at least those that have been documented so far, we got several unused voice lines for Vanessa herself. These unused voice clips make up almost half of all of her voice clips in the entire game, leading some to believe that she was once planned to have a much larger role in the game, with some even speculating, like I mentioned earlier, that she was once planned to be playable. Anyways, here are all of the Vanessa voice clips that don't go used. Gregory? Gregory? Hello? I'm here to help. Gregory? Is that you? Gregory, I can keep you safe. Please come out. I'm here to help you. Is someone there? You've got to trust me. I'm sorry. I think we lost him. Over here! I found him! Contact me if you see him. Check the area. He can't be far. He's here! Get over here! Where did he go? Monty, Roxy, Chica. Report. I don't know how to fix it. What am I going to do? If Freddy was working, we would have him by now. Okay, I didn't mean to. He walks through every security door as if he owns the place. No, I can find him. It won't be like the last one. I have the second key. Look, I don't know where it is. Do you know how many arcade games there are? I'll find it eventually. I've looked everywhere. 
It's not here. Now next up, kind of adjacent to the unused voice clips, now let's take a look at some unused text that's left in the game. First is some alternate or scrapped dialogue for the game's intro for which only subtitle text is left over. Gregory's original line mentions that Vanessa wants to kill him rather than get him. There's a scrapped bit where Freddy would mention that he actually remembers Gregory from some unknown event that's completely open to speculation. Freddy was to warn Gregory to not let something find him. And lastly, Freddy explaining that previous Freddy models had done some bad things in the past, and that this version of him is, according to him, completely safe. Then, also for the intro, there's an alternate subtitle for the first message Freddy sends to the Faz Watch. Here, originally, it looks like the back room was known as the maintenance closet, and he also mentions that he was programmed to not notice the button that opens the door to it. Then, finally, for the unused subtitles, also near the intro, there's alternate text for the utility segment when Freddy takes Gregory to the first aid station. Instead of Freddy feeling that Greg is the incredibly vague broken and that something is wrong, the original line was Freddy was to detect Gregory bleeding, and then noticing that his arm is badly cut. I mean, I guess they were trying to keep the game more kid-friendly or something by removing this reference to blood, but like, the game is already rated T for Teen, and I don't think this would have pushed it to anything higher. So yeah, I don't know, it seems like a pretty odd change to keep Gregory's injuries so vague here. And next, we got some non-subtitle text that goes unused as well. There's some basic tutorial text for the Faz Watch, some unused difficulty text, which we'll revisit in the next video, as well as a few bits of text that detail that at one point, the game would have had time actively passing, instead of just progressing whenever the player reaches certain plot points, and specifically, it would even go while the player is looking at the Faz Watch. This idea appears to have been still kicking at this point in development as seen in this trailer that we discussed in my previous video with the early Faz Watch design, as we can see it at a very precise time down to the minute, something that's only seen at certain few points in the final game. This, honestly, would have given this game a completely different feel, as there would constantly be pressure to progress in the game, kind of like Majora's Mask. Alright, so let's kick things off with a good one here. It turns out that much like many past Five Nights at Freddy's games, there were once plans to include an extras option to the main menu of the game. And although it was scrapped from normal play, by modifying the game's files it can apparently actually still be loaded in. This extras option would have led to another submenu with several other things to choose from. We got a shortcut to playing the game's minigames and office games, the character gallery we went over in a previous video, a button to play the game's credits, which for whatever reason doesn't work here, as well as a dedicated button for DLC. Now hopefully this is free DLC that they add, or at the very least they clean up the base game's bugs and add in some of the unused content that's already in the files before they start charging for more content. This menu also has a scrap survival mode. I want to spend a bit more time analyzing and researching how this mode works, so like I said in the intro, I've decided I'm going to make yet another video for this, as I really think it deserves to be discussed in a bit more depth. So once again, stay tuned for that, and if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed if you want to be notified as soon as it's up. Anyways, back to the menu here, the minigames option brings up a list of the minigames found in the game, including Balloon Boy, Fazer Blast, and all of the Princess Quest games. You'll also see a whole bunch of games here that aren't normally accessible, such as the scrapped Chica's Feeding Frenzy I went over in a previous video. And similarly in that video, I also went over 9 unused holes for Gator Golf, and judging by this menu, it looks like there was actually once planned to be a second Gator Golf arcade cabinet in the game that would have featured those unused holes. Then next are battle segments with Vanny and Burn Trap. The Vanny button here doesn't work at all, as whatever Vanny battle there might have once been, I guess was completely removed, and the Burn Trap one just takes you to the area just before the underground pizzeria. Then lastly on this menu is Light Test. Now, based on the name alone, I can only assume that this was an option for testing lighting, but there seems to be a bit more to it than that. 
From what I gathered, this seems to load you into what looks to be an earlier version of the Pizzaplex, where everything appears much darker than normal, and more areas are loaded in the distance, sometimes not for the better, as it makes stuff look weird. For example, we can see the window texture you see in the second floor area down here, which is pretty odd. Secondly, this version of the Pizzaplex features some areas that seem to have been removed from the final version. In addition to featuring the unused VIP room and kitchen I went over in my first Lost Bits video on this game, there's also this hallway that would have connected the main lobby to the atrium as well as to the Fazcade. Just like some of the other changes to the layout of this map we discussed in previous videos, I can only assume this was removed in favor of just using the elevators to go between the areas, since having all these areas loaded in at once might have been deemed too demanding on hardware. It's really too bad though, because this shortcut between areas would have been super nifty. A short jog to Fazcade here is way better than having to go through this elevator, go upstairs here in the atrium, and then take that elevator too. Also, this hallway appears to show that there was once planned to be an entrance to it right here in the atrium. Again, big shame this was removed. Additionally, in this removed hallway, we can partially see the Roxy's Raceway animation that I went over in my last video. But here, it's also lacking most of the cool Mario Kart references that are seen in the full animation. It's kind of funny that the character whose section of the Pizzaplex this ad was made after is the only character whose animation of this is never seen as Freddy's is seen here and then Chica and Monty's are seen in this hallway. Anyways, let's get back to the menu stuff. With only about half of the options on this menu here actually being normally found in the game, it's no wonder why this menu was scrapped. Next up, Office Games would let the player quickly load in to a certain part of the game, and here, highlighted in red, we can see what appears to be three segments of the game that never made the cut. Roxy Racers was probably the scrapped karting segment we went over in my last video, and although you might be thinking Endogeddon might be the segment where you first encounter the Endos that chase you, and that Pizza Sim could be the segment where you control the Pizza Bot, these three options are the only ones that don't work on this menu, so it's more likely that these were completely different sections that were scrapped. And since this list appears to be in a chronological order and when you see them in the game, these might have been some late or post-game segments that were cut. Next up here, I just wanted to quickly mention a few more areas that go normally unused in this game. The first of these is actually the area just outside the main lobby entrance to the Pizzaplex. Now you can briefly see outside before the doors close, but surprisingly there's actually a decent amount of stuff there. There's a pickup, drop off, roundabout thing near the doors for cars, a whole bunch of trees and light posts, as well as this security or ticketing booth. Interestingly, this entire area also has working collision implemented, allowing Gregory to run around here. This makes me think that perhaps at some point in development, there were plans to have this outside area playable too, or it might have been used for a cutscene or something. Then next, another normally inaccessible area is just behind this door here. Now normally, this is where you go to finish the game for one of the endings, and when you interact with the door, the game will instantly just cut to the end cutscene. Well, turns out there's actually a fully modeled fire escape area behind these doors here. It even has the large exit text that's seen in this comic panel here. Not a huge loss, but kind of strange that they didn't at least have the player running up these stairs before the ending and instead just cut it here. Then similarly, next to another area where you can end the game, there's this door that you can't normally go through. But behind this door is a short hallway with another door at the end that surprisingly also swings open when you get close to it. Unfortunately behind it is just a brick wall, but I'm inclined to believe that this too might have once been planned for some sort of ending sequence. Now before we get to more unused stuff, I just want to quickly correct something from the last video. It turns out that the hand model I mentioned that was thought to be unused actually does appear very briefly in the game at Roxy's salon here. They are very easy to miss, but yep, here they are. So I guess unfortunately these weren't from a scrapped first person view or anything like that. Alright, anyways, next up there is a folder in the game's files titled Test Procedural Walls. And it contains various meshes and textures for various walls, big surprise. There's walls with openings of all sorts of sizes, as well as a whole bunch of textures for these walls, including bricks, chain link fences, a hedge, and more. 
Now, just based on the name, it seems like developers were testing for some sort of section in the game where various walls would be procedurally generated. And I can only assume this would have been for some sort of maze or something. If it really was indeed for a maze, this sounds like it could have made for a really cool segment, something way better than whatever this was. Next, there's an unused video file left in the game titled Hour 7 Menu. Now this file name pretty explicitly indicates it was meant to be seen in the background of the main menu, presumably once the player made it to 7am. However, this never gets used since it's impossible to ever normally save after 6am in the game, and even if you do via glitches or whatnot, this video still never shows up. Next up, we went over a whole bunch of unused graphics, voice lines, and text in the previous video, but even since then, a whole bunch more has been documented. First up for the graphics, there's this unused texture that appears to have been meant for some sort of skeleton or something. Currently, it's unclear what this would have been meant for exactly, but I assume maybe some skeletons might have once been planned to be seen in the underground area beneath the Pizzaplex. Whatever it was meant for though, the texture alone is certainly creepy all by itself. Then next up, there are several more unused voice lines that are left over in the game. And first are some for Roxy. This one has Roxy counting down for some sort of race, and it's likely this was meant for the scrapped go-kart race part of Roxy's raceway. On your marks, get set, go! Then also related to that section are a pair of unused voice lines for after you decommission Roxy. My face, my face, my face! Give me back my eyes! It's a shame these were scrapped, you can almost feel the pain in these lines. Then next up for Chica, first are two alternate unused takes for her smelling a yummy pizza pie. I smell pizza! I smell pizza! I think either one of these sound better than the take that was used as it sounds like she's saying pizza instead of pizza. I smell pizza! Then next are some unused lines for Chica for when she would, I guess, spot Gregory in the Pizzaplex. Stop! There you are! I found you! Tag! You're it! It's currently unclear why these weren't used. Perhaps the developers felt there were already a sufficient number of these lines as is. Next are a pair of unused versions of Chica laughing and clucking, and these are apparently not the same as her sometimes clucking when getting stunned by the Phaser Blaster or a camera. <laughs> then related to Chica, there are several unused voice lines dealing with the Kitchen Pizza Bot segment in the game. The first of these appear to be early versions of the PizzaBot computer announcer voice lines, where at this point it was called the Fazbear Make Your Own Pizza Experience, instead of the Mega Pizzaplex Quick Delivery Virtual Ordering System. You have selected the full Fazbear Make Your Own Pizza Experience. We apologize for any delays or errors, as this feature is still in our beta testing phase. We apologize for any delays or errors, as this feature is still in our beta testing phase. Now, let's get started. Also, one of these lines implies you had a choice of choosing between cheese or pepperoni on the pizza instead of having to add both. Options, pepperoni or cheese. Then, in addition to these, there are also several unused voice lines for the pizza bot itself. Hello, who was there? It must be the wind. No, no, no. Not again. And there's also one featuring the early version of the staff bot voice we discussed in the last video. Oh no, Chica is in the kitchen. This is not good, not good. All of these appear to suggest that Chica would have had a more prominent role in this area as she might have chased the pizza bot around here while making the pizza, instead of just appearing at the end to destroy it. Next up we got some unused lines for Freddy himself. The first of these has Freddy basically questioning Gregory's sanity as he doesn't believe that Greg saw a large dancing rabbit lady. And yeah, you know, I guess that is a pretty hard thing to believe. Gregory, are you certain you have seen a dancing rabbit lady? I believe you if you say you have, but it is highly unlikely. I have not seen her, and she does not sound like a character we have at the Pizzaplex. Then secondly, there is an unused line for Freddy mentioning that his finger has a built-in lighter. This lighter is only ever seen in one of the comic panels in the VIP ending of the game, 
So it's unclear if this line would have just served as foreshadowing to this, or, as some believe, that this might have been intended for a scrapped animated cutscene for this ending, as there is also animation data for Freddy's model mouthing these words left over in the game. My finger doubles as a lighter. You know, for birthday candles. And creme brulee. And then lastly for Freddy here, there's also an unused line that appears to reveal what exactly is stored in these silos. Although I thought it could have been pizza sauce or something, turns out it's actually syrup for Fizzy Fads. Well done. You are near the Fizzy Fads syrup fat. You should be able to find your way to the main kitchen from here. I guess for a pizza plex the size of this one, they'd probably sell a whole bunch of beverages, so I guess this amount of Fizzy Fads goo makes sense. Next, we went over a whole bunch of unused staff bot voice lines in the last video, but turns out there are several others that also still currently go unused. These include numerous lines for the sentry bots, sewer bots, as well as even a sweeper bot, which might have been an early name for the mop bots. Some of these lines are pretty interesting, like the sentry bots claiming they always come back, as well as the sewer bots begging for help. Anyways, here's a run through of all these staff bot lines. Alert. Alert. Are you lost? Backup requested. Be sure to smile. Have you seen this boy? I always come back. I am a security officer. I am looking for intruders. I enjoy my job. I found the kid. Lost child found. Lost child reported. Security alert. Something over here. Staff only. Target located. The pizza plex is closed. The customer is always right. Come closer. Help me. Clean. 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 Not good enough. The floor is not going to clean itself. This must be cleaned. Now interestingly, some of these lines like Staff Only and Are You Lost are also lines that Chica and Roxy use. And lastly, there are also a few more lines for Gregory I want to bring up here and these seem to be ones that were meant for the Vanny ending. The first two here, once again, reinforce that there seems to have been once plans to have animated cutscenes for this ending, or at least they would have had voiceovers. Princess Quest 3? Dismantle Vanny! Dismantle Vanny! Uh, are you having fun yet? Punch it, Freddy! The last line there was more likely, however, probably meant for when Freddy busts open a gate with Monty's claws equipped. Next, there are numerous additional bits of subtitle text in the game for Freddy, and unfortunately these don't seem to have any audio associated with them. In the interest of time, I won't be digging into all of these here, but highlights here include lines that suggest that Freddy could have been betrayed by Gregory and would then seemingly start hunting him down, Freddy begging the other animatronics to resist her, I assume Vanny, noting the name similarity between Vanny and Vanessa, and my favorites, mentioning a deluxe lock-in scavenger hunt event at the Pizzaplex where kids would be locked in overnight. And these were apparently discontinued due to legal reasons. Big surprise. Security Breach has so many unused bits of dialogue that I'm sure even after covering all of these, there's probably even more to be found. And while we're talking audio things, there's one more unused sound effect to go over. This is a very simple little fanfare that sounds very much like it would have been used in one of the arcade settings. And then, much like the jump scare sounds from other past FNAF games, although not fully unused, the jump scare sounds in Security Breach also are only partially heard as they're quickly cut off after they start. Some of them have a distinct difference that's only heard at the end of the clips, so honestly, until listening to these in full myself, I didn't even know there were different jump scare sounds. Anyways, here are the sound effects in full. Let's see just how much we've been missing.
And now, congrats to you if you made it this far into the video as saving what I think is the best for last. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach actually has a debug mode left over in the game's files, and it's still mostly functional to boot. Now you do have to mod the files in order to access it, but still awesome that it's kicking around. When pulled up, this menu gives you access to a whole bunch of really cool things for the game. Arguably the best thing here is the ability to enable flying mode, which of course lets you fly around the game. And this, coupled with disabling collision here, basically lets you get anywhere you want real quick. And of course, lets you go places you normally wouldn't be able to. Then next on this menu, we see the option to toggle game clock running. Now this doesn't seem to have any real functionality now, but this was obviously for the mechanic we've discussed where the time would constantly progress, so I guess this would have let you stop and start that. And similarly next, this box lets you set the in-game time to anything you want. And what's cool about this is it actually affects the layout of the game to how it appears at a given time. For example, if I set the time to 2am, these barriers will appear here, blocking off access to the other floors of the atrium. A pretty handy tool for testing how stuff appears at different times in the game. Next up here is an option to enable cloaking. Now although I thought this would maybe hide the player from the animatronics, this doesn't seem to have any effect, so this appears to be some sort of scrapped mechanic in the game. Next is unlimited stamina, which is pretty self-explanatory, but let me tell you, unlimited sprinting sure is handy. And next is giving the player unlimited faz watch power. Now, in the final game, the Faz Watch never loses power, so I guess this was yet another scrapped mechanic where you'd have to recharge the watch much like the flashlight. Then next are options for setting the Faz Watch's battery level, again unused, as well as Freddy's battery level. Then we got some options for the AI animatronics, you can toggle spawning them in areas as you unlock them, toggle between the shattered versions of the main three hostile animatronics, as well as enable an ability to be able to see the animatronics highlighted in the game. This lets you see them through walls, and it also has text above them indicating which area they are currently roaming in. Additionally, with this feature enabled, I also noticed little question marks found on the floor all over the place. I couldn't really figure out what they did, but there certainly were a lot of them. Next is a really cool option, and this is for a scrapped vanny meter that shows up on screen. It's still in what looks to be a placeholder state as the graphics look definitely unfinished and it doesn't seem to have any sort of functionality in this state, though this debug menu does let you adjust it to whatever you want. Well, it turns out that this is yet another scrapped mechanic, big surprise, this time from the survival mode which again I'll go into more detail in the next video. Anyways back to the debug menu here, next are some buttons that let you both unlock everything in the game as well as re-lock it up. And this basically lets you have every single item in the game, both used and unused. Teleport here lets you teleport to whichever X, Y, and Z coordinates you want to in the map. You can toggle a display for showing your current X, Y, and Z coordinates, and this will also bring up the name of the room you are currently in. This option lets you toggle a display that will show you all the different maps that are loaded in at any given time, which I thought was kind of cool to see. This enable all inputs mode doesn't really seem to do anything. You can change your security level to whatever you want here. Gameplay trailer mode no longer seems to work, but I assume it might have changed the lighting in the game to match the level that was seen in the game's trailers. You can change the FOV to basically whatever you want, with some even extreme numbers that make the game nauseating, or just peace out altogether. See you later, I guess. You can also disable lighting, display the game's frame rate, toggle some graphic settings, and there's also this indicator here that's checked off as soon as you enter a hiding spot in the game. I assume this was somehow associated with the one achievement in Security Breach that you get for completing the game without ever using a hiding spot. Then next, survival item locations doesn't work in normal play, but it certainly does in the cut survival mode, which again, stay tuned for that. And then, the rest of the options on the screen don't seem to work or currently have an unknown effect, like showing collision, light map density, and pre-computed visibility. Many of the scrapped mechanics seen on this debug menu, like the Faz Watch power and cloaking ability, must have been scrapped closer to the game's release, since they appear to have been far enough along in development that the devs were already testing them. Now, that's a lot of debugging stuff already, but hey, that was only the first tab on this menu here. 
Next, we move on to the inventory tab, and this gives you a big old list of every single item that's in the game, both used and unused, and you can give yourself said items by simply ticking these boxes. And while we're talking about the items here, let's go over all of the items that aren't normally obtainable in the game. For equipment, found unused, there's both Helpy and Nightmare Helpy, as seen in FNAF VR. Then for food, there's the Fizzy Faz Monty Mystery Mix, I guess an early version of the Monty Mystery Mix, as well as a baking bag with the following description. A bag full of everything you need to make a pizza. Fazbear not responsible for injuries if not used for pizza baking. And this seems to have been meant to be part of either the Pizza Bot segment or yet another scrapped mission. For trophies, there's a Fazer Tag Champion Badge. And then finally for clothes, we got the Cube of Testing. Thingamabob, Strange Cube, Wallet, Crash Coin, Faz Frost, Ultra Rare Items 1 through 9, Rare Items 5 through 9, as well as everyone's favorite, Uncommon Item 12. Now, some of these, like the Faz Frosting, aren't clothes, so it's strange they're categorized as such. And other things, like the Thingamabob and Cube of Testing, definitely seem like test items with some awesome placeholder names. And just speculating here, but the wallet might have also been for a scrapped mechanic of purchasing stuff with coins or something from the sales bots. Not really sure why else you would need to get a wallet in the game. I wish there was a bit more context as to what these items might have been meant for, if anything. But hey, on the flip side, it's funny to see the images of these items just defaulting to item image missing or a white rectangle. Anyways, back again to the debug menu, next tab up is Freddy Gregory, and here you can toggle various abilities for yourself. You can toggle Freddy's upgrades from the other animatronics, the ability to call and enter and exit Freddy, as well as the ability for Gregory to crouch, as well as what looks to be yet another scrapped mechanic, Gregory's Sight ability. Since it's no longer currently functional in the game, it's unknown exactly what this was. But my best guess would be an ability to briefly be able to see outlines of animatronics or prizes through walls or something, maybe similar to the other debug feature we went over earlier. On to the next tab, here we got missions. As the name implies, here you can check off which missions you want the game to think you've completed or not. Additionally, on the top right of this menu are various buttons that are supposed to take you to a certain part of the game. The Monty, Chica, and Roxy boss buttons work as you'd expect and take you to their respective boss battle areas. And then, unlike how we saw it on the minigames menu, the Vanny battle here actually works, but unfortunately it just takes you back to the Fazer Blast area in the game, and then Burn Trap battle warps you to the elevator you take down to the underground pizzeria. Then next, we have the Instruction Cards tab, and as the name suggests for this, here you can cycle through all the different graphics for the various instruction pop-ups you see throughout the game. This includes upgrading Freddy, how to crouch, etc. Not super useful, but still cool to be able to peep through all these different graphics. And last up for this debug menu is the Other tab, and here, in addition to just being able to close out of the debug menu, you can also play around with various graphic settings. You can have the game run a hardware benchmark to, I guess, optimize the graphic for one's given hardware. You can set the visual quality, ray tracing, and DLSS levels. And lastly, you can also set the game to run at the graphic settings that are used for both the PS4 and 5. I assume these were probably used by the developers to check to see if all the different areas could run well enough for the PlayStation hardware. Honestly, this overall was one of the most robust debug modes I think we've ever seen on the series to date. In addition to the awesome ability to just fly around and explore of course, there's just so many different things to toggle and play around with here. Definitely one of, if not the best debug modes I've ever gotten to use. <laughs> Alright, first a quick disclaimer, this video is being made in early February of 2022, so although all of this is currently not included in the game, the developers have stated that more content will be coming and we've already discussed an unused version of the menu which already includes this mode there as well as DLC. As such, it's entirely possible, and likely, that this mode will be added in the future, so please do keep that in mind if in a few months all this gets stuffed back into the game. Anyways, so in my previous video, I mentioned an unused menu here in Security Breach that offers up a new option, Extras. 
And one of the options that's offered in this extra submenu is a Scrap Survival Mode. Clicking this leads you to yet another screen, and this here would allow you to customize a run through the game with various options. First here you can adjust difficulty level, giving more animatronic encounters the higher you set the level. Then I guess how many real world minutes would make one in-game hour go by, and I guess this is a remnant of the scrapped timing mechanic we discussed in my previous videos, where time would actively progress instead of only progressing when certain points are reached in the game's plot. Then here, you could also choose how many lives you could have for a given run, either 1, 10, or unlimited. And then lastly here, we can see a whole bunch of symbols that can be swapped around from a whole bunch of icons including Helpy, Monty, a flashlight, and more. Now at first, I thought this was a way to set up various options in the game, such as this plush looking one enabling the scrapped random plush jump scares that I mentioned in a previous video, I assume having charge stations accessible, what looks like having the flashlight, and having Freddy accessible at all in the run. But it turns out that these actually don't directly work like this, and it seems like these actually are used to set up a random seed for a run through the survival mode. Now, if you're unfamiliar with randomizers like this, basically a seed is a unique run that can be replicated if all the symbols are the same. So, for example, if you got set up in a really cool randomized run you liked and you wanted a buddy to have the same conditions, you would tell them to put in the exact same symbol order. Essentially, every unique string of symbols here should result in its own unique randomized set of conditions. And here, if you want a completely randomized run, this menu also lets you shuffle up all of the options if you're feeling lucky. There's also one other option on this menu, to spawn all possible locations, but we'll come back to that in a bit. Now, once you proceed from this menu, you don't just start the game like normal, you actually get loaded into the first security office that you encounter in the game, in front of the large computer setup and a button to skip what I assume would be an intro or short little cutscene that would kind of explain what's going on as it changes to a warning screen for a bit. Well, this intro to this mode is still very much incomplete here as it is. First of all, although the button with the dev skip text above it is clearly seen, there's a small problem here. As it is right now, you can't even move in this mode at all. And this is quite a problem, as after the short and silent cutscene here, the screen will freeze for whatever reason, and then will prompt you to press any key to continue. Again, we're definitely missing some context here with whatever we're supposed to see or hear before moving on, but as soon as you proceed, our pal Chica starts coming in, and since we can't move normally, I'm sure you can figure out the rest. Now normally, this is where we would hit a wall and give up, but nah, we ain't no quitters here. By using the debug mode I detailed in my last video, we can simply toggle this option which miraculously gives us our movement back. And now, we can really explore the rest of this mode, at least to an extent. As you can see here, it's incredibly dark in this mode, so much so that it's basically impossible to see where you're going without a flashlight. So you'll be seeing me disable the lighting effects quite a bit in this video, just so we can see things a little bit better. That said, this darkness also makes some parts of the Pizzaplex look super cool. Like, man, that looks awesome. Anywho, let's get back to the mode itself. Basically, for the survival mode, in short, several presents would be scattered around the Pizzaplex, and you would have to seek them out and find party passes to unlock basically every area outside the main lobby in the game. So this means you would need party passes to unlock areas like Roxy Raceway, the Arcade, as well as several other areas that you can normally just access without a party pass. This is much different than just Gator Golf and Phaser Blast like you do in the normal run of the game. Additionally, different presents I guess would have different rarities or something, as when you get a game over in this mode, a score screen is displayed, breaking down how many of each color of present a player collected, and also a breakdown of how many points were earned. So basically, the goal seems pretty simple, you'd have to open presents to get points, try to find party passes to open up new areas, find your way to other security office areas to increase your security level, and then rinse and repeat to try and get as many points as possible. And as you first enter the main lobby in this mode and the time starts ticking, the game appears to outline just how many presents there are to collect, so I guess there is a maximum score you can get if you do collect them all. 
And as a side note, this idea of unlocking various areas with party passes seen here in the survival mode also seems to be what was seen in one of the preview trailers for this game, as there, Gregory had two party passes at once, something you can't normally have in the final game. So maybe the game was once less linear, and you could actually choose which areas you wanted to access, and in what order. Anyways, back to the survival mode here, depending on what your seed was on the menu, the gifts found around the pizza plex would be in different places. To quickly exemplify this, with this seed, this present can be seen on this here bench, and with this seed, it's just somewhere else. Unfortunately, the mode doesn't seem to be fully functional here, as although I'm free to roam around to my heart's content here, the ability to actually open presents, for whatever reason, doesn't work. And that's not all either. I was unable to save, enter hiding spots, and although I could call Freddy, the game didn't let me hop on in, even if I forced the game to let me with debug mode. As such, in this current state, I wasn't able to really normally play this mode as it was intended, and as such, since I wasn't able to get any party passes to use to get to the other areas, without using the debug mode to fly around, we'd be pretty stuck. Additionally, it looks like several of the doors around the Pizzaplex also had their security levels changed. Like here at where you normally start the game, these doors already require like a level 6 security clearance. So it really seems like you'd have to go back and forth throughout the Pizzaplex quite a bit. At first, I thought maybe the security levels for these doors would also be randomized depending on the seed as it would add an extra layer of shaking things up. But no matter the seed I would set up on the menu, the security doors seem to have the same new security level. This actually goes for a lot of the things with all the symbols here. I expected more things to be randomized, like having a flashlight, being able to have Freddy, etc. But I tried numerous different seeds, and basically besides the gift spawn locations, not much else really seemed to change. I never could start with Freddy, a flashlight, anything like that. But although these weren't randomized, there were a few other oddities that occurred at certain time points that I was able to note. First, a few times, certainly not every time, at precisely 12.10am, or once it was 12.06, Vanessa seemed to spawn above here up in the security office near the East Arcade and Prize Counter area. Since she only sometimes spawned in, I guess maybe she is one of those things that's randomized in a run. Anyways, from here, strangely she just walks back and forth between either of the security doors, a few steps into the arcade, and yeah, that's about it. Well, at least for now. There's a bit more to Vanessa here, but we'll come back to that in a bit. Another thing that seems to be activated at a certain time is the power going out, as if it wasn't dark enough already. This actually seemed to happen at 12.50am every time, and then a message to find a recharge station would also pop up. After this, at 12.55, Moonbro here would start to spawn around. Sometimes he would chase me, and other times he just stood there, menacingly. Well, basically at 12.50, you're given 10 in-game minutes to find a recharge station, and depending on how long an in-game hour is in real time, this is either a lot of time, or not. And if you don't find a recharge station in time, well, you're basically insta-killed by Moonpal at 1am. And there's literally no escaping it either. You can have your back against a wall, not see him at all, and bam, off to sleep you go. Unfortunately, the recharge stations are yet another thing I wasn't able to use in this mode in its current state. So yeah, there was just no way to survive this without busting open the debug menu. Now back to the menu here, there's also the spawn all possible locations option I mentioned earlier. As you might expect, ticking off this option will of course spawn the gifts in all the locations that they could possibly appear in. Like, literally all of them, constantly. Having this many presents constantly loaded in really slows down the game. I have a pretty okay PC myself, and even with disabling lighting and all that, my game certainly wasn't running at an optimal frame rate. One interesting thing I found about this is that some presents appear to spawn in areas that might reveal some slight changes in certain areas or ideas from an earlier point in development. For example, there's this gift box here that appears to be overlapping with this stack of plates. Some presents are just hovering, suggesting there was once something beneath them, 
And also a gift can spawn behind the door in Vanny's hideout that actually leads to this area behind the bowling segment. The door also opens here unlike being out of order as seen in the final game. There are several other things to further suggest that this mode was being developed during an earlier point in development too. Some doors that lead to nowhere, presents that are located either in rooms that no longer exist or in areas that are no longer accessible, and most notably I think, there appears to be some party pass staff bots blocking areas that were removed from the final cut of the game. For example, the one that immediately caught my attention is that oddly, there's a staff bot blocking just this corner of the lobby. Well, if you watched my previous video, you might remember that just behind this wall, there was once a corridor that was intended to connect the main lobby to the atrium area as well as the Fazcade. To add to this, there is another one of these staff bots blocking this unassuming wall in the atrium here, and this is actually where this scrapped hallway was supposed to connect here. Now unfortunately, this was removed from the game, likely due to having all these areas loaded in, affecting game performance, but yeah, it seems like at the point in development that this survival mode was last worked on, this hallway must have been recently removed as these fellas here are still trying to block it. Furthermore to this, there's also one of these bots blocking access to a door in Pirate's Cove here. Now you can't ever go through these doors normally since Greg is banned, but once again, since there's a staff bot here, perhaps it was once a planned path as well. Then further, furthermore, there are some other differences in this version of the Pizzaplex. Most notably to me was that several doors that aren't usable in the base game actually open here, like this door connecting the atrium to the hallway beside the daycare and lobby, as well as this door in the East Arcade. But although they are usable, I got a quick reminder as to why they were probably made out of order by the developers for the final map. There's another staff bot blocking these doors to the prize counter area, suggesting they would be usable as well. And then behind this staff bot here, I found an unused hallway I don't think I've seen anyone else talk about. Well, this door would have opened to a hallway that would have led to the cupcake restaurant area. But here, instead of the doors just being made out of order, this unused hallway was just sealed off behind this wall. Once again, it's too bad this hallway wasn't used, but I think it's just a really weird way to cover it up like this. So yeah, I think either there were some different ideas for getting around the areas at whatever stage of development this mode was worked on, or alternatively, there would simply be doors accessible only in survival mode that aren't in the regular mode. Another more minor change that I noticed is that none of the little Fazbear buttons appear anywhere here, including in the elevators, making them unusable just like pretty much everything else it seems. I mean, I get it's an unused mode here, yeah, but damn, they certainly made it hard to try and play normally. Now next, a few things I teased in my previous video. There are a few effects found on the debug menu that are exclusively only functional in this cut survival mode. First off is the Survival Item Locations option on the main menu here. Well, as hinted by the name, this actually points out exactly where each present box is located near you by literally emitting a blue beam from your current location to where it is. Now this was obviously used by the developers to quickly locate where all the presents were, but also hey, it could be a pretty nifty cheat if you're stuck and can't find any more presents in this mode. And now lastly here, probably the most interesting thing that can be exclusively currently seen in the survival mode, at least I think, is that here we can fully use the otherwise unused Vanny meter that I went over in my last video. Well, this meter actually seems to work with Vanessa. For me, the meter slowly filled up, and then once full, Vanessa would break from her very short security path near the office, and then start to jog... somewhere. I followed her a few times, and each time she would eventually run into a wall and vanish. I could not find her at all after she went into the wall both of these times. This certainly had me scratching my head. This was quite different from what I saw shown in this gameplay clip from Maz. In Maz's gameplay, once the meter was filled, get this, Vanessa would actually instantly transform into Vanny. I have no idea why I wasn't able to recreate this, but this is way more interesting. Now based on one of the endings to the game, it's implied that despite having a very similar name, 
Vanessa and Vanny aren't the same person. But it looks like this might not always have been the case, as this scrap mechanic seems to prove otherwise. I'm personally so confused with this game's story that honestly, who knows at this point. To add to the oddities here, when blasting Vanessa with either the blaster or camera, she seemed to make weird robotic noises. Yeah, I don't know, somebody call MatPat or something. As far as this survival mode goes, assuming everything was working the way it was intended to, it honestly sounds pretty cool. It seems like this mode would have had the player going back and forth in the pizza plex to find as many presents as they could, and would have given an awesome incentive for replayability for those interested in score or time attack runs. Almost every FNAF game has had an extra mode where you could customize difficulty and which animatronics would appear and such, so this would have been an awesome mode to have here as well. It's a real shame it was cut. At this point, with all the unused and scrapped content and ideas we've talked about, clocking it at almost 100 minutes between the four videos I've made, there's just about a complete second game that was scrapped here, and this is only the stuff documented so far. I also want to give a quick shout out to the contributors on the cutting room floor, as well as on the technical FNAF Discord. They were a massive help with making these videos possible. I'm sure we'll see more stuff added and removed from Security Breach in the coming months, especially if there is a DLC button basically ready to go, and when that time comes, I'll be sure to bring you guys all the details, so make sure you're subscribed to find your way back in the future. Till then though, check out my other videos in this Lost Bit series. I've made over like 100 videos now covering this stuff, so I'm sure you'll find another game in there that you'll enjoy. But as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.